Last year, I started the Pineapple Carriage. Um, funny name, some people would say, funny name, and I'll explain it to you later. The Pineapple Carriage was started um, from a thought, an idea of having a summer pilot project for adolescents ages 12 to 17 to address specific needs. Wake up. <laughs> Did y'all hear what I say? Wake up. Don't sleep on your gift. But what I mean by that is, follow me. I'm from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, United States. Mount Pleasant is a town that has 86,000 people. Charleston is the city in which Mount Pleasant is, is located. There's about 780,000 people in the city of Charleston. Our educational system in Mount Pleasant, we have the top four ranking schools. Wando High School has a, pop, has a, a student total of 4,000 students. 4,000 students in this public school. Lang Middle School is the number one STEM school in the US. What would you say if I told you that in the Mount Pleasant area, we have a 98% graduation rate. Sound good? How about if I told you 62% of the 98% read at a fourth grade level? What's your response? How did that happen? We have this thing called No Child Left Behind in the state of South Carolina, which means that you know you could reach certain benchmarks by barely average. The scorecard for South Carolina means that you have a 60%. If you make a 60% in any given subject, you go on to the next level. There are many issues that can be you know, discovered or stated as to why I started this, this pilot project. Specifically, it was for the, the youth of Gullah Geechee culture, my culture. Um, long story short, with the slavery. Slaves were brought from Africa on the coast of Charleston, South Carolina, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia. Um, and after the Civil War, Reconstruction, these slaves had the opportunity to either purchase land or were given land. We ended up having these settlement communities. And our language was Basically, we couldn't really learn English. We had to learn it however we had to learn it. So the language from Africa was kind of mixed with the English. And we ended up with what you call Gullah Geechee. So what is the issue? Okay, well, the issue is there's a language barrier along with the reading and the <coughs> comprehension issues, those disparities. And when the students are in school, if they have teachers or administrators that are not really familiar with the culture, there's a language barrier, but no one really understands why. Because everyone's speaking English, but how it's interpreted is very different. What I may say in English to the instructor, if they're not familiar with the culture, it could be interpreted as something totally different from what I'm actually implying. So with this great educational opportunity, we have a system where the middle schoolers, they decide and declare what major they want when they go into high school, at eight, in eighth grade. But who is actually giving them the opportunity to really discover, know what it is that they want to do? So you're asking the eighth grader to say that I want to be business major, entrepreneur, fashion, for high school. And I sell the idea that they're 16 years old, they can start associate's degree, graduate at 18, and then have an associate's degree, an apprenticeship, an internship, make money at 18 years old. But how can they really do that if the comprehension, the literacy, is at a fourth grade level by the time they graduate? That means that they really didn't have the opportunity to walk into the opportunities that were created for them. In elementary school, they take a test, and depending on how they're tested, it gives them the idea of four different categories. You test at this point to say that you're only gonna be able to graduate from high school. 
or you're going to be able to qualify for community college, or you're going to go in the military, or you'll be you're a good candidate for a four year college. So what are we telling the kids? We're telling them that yes, if you graduate from high school, if you do all of these things, you'll be able to get these opportunities. But what we're not saying is, how are we really going to get you there? We're providing the opportunity, but how are we really going to get you there? My point is that yes, 4,000 students in the high school, that's a lot of students, a lot of students. Your teachers cannot field all of that. They cannot field the ability to take care of seven, eight hours of curriculum and then turn around and help each child with issues that are specific to their needs, how they learn. So now we have to turn it to the community. Parents, leaders, politicians, pastors. How are we going to address this situation? Well, I can't speak about it, be a product of one of the communities that has these children that have this disparity, and I don't do my part. So that's where the pineapple carriage came in. What's in the name? In South Carolina, you'll see pineapple symbols all over the place. It's a sign of hospitality to us. You know, it means something different in different countries or cultures, but it's a sign of hospitality. Um, and it was adopted by Charlestonians as a fruit significantly seen as a sign of hospitality and welcoming across the Charleston and Mount Pleasant area. The carriage, often used as a method of transportation for royalty, <coughs> symbolic of luxury, elegance, and prestige. You see that. Charleston is number one, Condé Nast, for the place traveling for tourism. The motto of the pineapple carriage, hospitality plus excellence equals success. But this, me, this model is based on what it is for the student. Hospitality, yes. Yes, ma'am, no ma'am, please and thank you. Having respect can get you very far than just being the most brilliant person in the world. If you don't know how to treat people, if you don't know how to talk to them, sometimes that's, that's a deal breaker. Success is whatever they want it to be from their vantage point. But what is it, what are the core principles? What is it that we want to gain from this program? Three core principles. Be optimistic, embrace your culture, nurture your gifts. Be optimistic. You have to have an open mind. But someone has to help you navigate what that means. If at middle school, You've never seen anything outside of your community. You've never been exposed to anything outside of your community. You've never spoken to anyone outside of the group of people or the culture of the settlement community that you're in. How do you know what being open-minded is? How do you know what optimism is? Someone has to take the time to actually get you there, give you the exposure, help you to know where it is that you want to grow, or help you to discover what it is that you want to do in life. That's where we fall into it. Embrace your culture. I explained to you the Gullah Geechee culture. That's me. What do I mean by that? A lot of our natives sold sweet grass baskets. It's an art form. When the slaves were brought over, they sold these big old rice fan baskets. Rice is one of the biggest cultivations in the, in the area. So they would put the rice in the basket, throw it up, and let the wind blow off the husks. But what they did was, they learned how to turn it into a business. It's not just the art, but it's also the language. This is my culture. So I, I told my mother that I wanted, I wanted to uh, become an entrepreneur. I have 11, over 10 years healthcare experience. So it was kind of like, okay, Adrian, what are you doing now? But we didn't have just a regular conversation, so I'm going to just give you a little insight on how that conversation would or could sound. Mama, I got an IE. What? <laughs> now, girl, you're not trying to watch my story. What are you worrying me for? Mama, I got an IE. What that is? It's the business school. Oh, what kind of business school only got two letters in your name? It's 
got to be back. What? And then you just finish a lesson last year. You ain't learned nothing from none of the lesson. You got to keep on the going to school. What are you going to school for? I don't understand. What is IE supposed to do? Well, mom, this particular program, because I like to be in diverse, you know, situations just around different people to teach me different things, for me to learn all of the things that I don't really get from staying in one spot. I want to learn more. I want to be able to provide these opportunities to the youth that I come in contact with because they may never be able to have the same experiences that I have, but if I can bring it to them, then that will give them a different insight on all of the possibilities. Why? Because Miss Adrian is a product of them. She looks exactly like them. She lived in the same area. She had some of the same opportunities. She might have not had some of the disparities that they have because they probably didn't have anyone helping them to drive the vehicle, to have the open mind to know what was out there, to know which what direction to go. But then they would be able to get what it is that she has if she pours it back into them. Well, <laughs> all I got for say, upon the time you done finish yet, this yet, you better not know where you could go. Because see, I ain't got no time to be in the heck with all these bunch of chilling. And then you ain't, you still try to get the lesson. I ain't know whether you get the lesson or not. But I guess you to get the lesson because you bring me the degree. That's my culture. <laughs> Believe you me, that was the hardest thing for me to do. Why? Because where I'm from, for me to speak like that, it's a stereotype and it's, it's a stigma. A lot of times we see or we understand or we are made to believe that it is a handicap because it's pigeon talk. It's Ebonics. It means that we're uneducated because of how we are perceived to sound. But if you're listening to me now, there's a different way that I speak to individuals that do not understand my culture or may not understand what it is that I'm saying in my culture than the way that I would speak to my mother. And I had the same issue that some of these children have with the language barrier. I was 30 years old before I was really comfortable to speak. Because even with my speech right now, some people would say, I don't understand what you're saying. And that would stop me. It would prohibit me from actually wanting to express myself because I would feel as though, well, wait a minute, what is wrong with me? And if I had that issue until I was 30 years old, can I imagine, only imagine how the youth feel? So what I wanted to do was be able to bring those different perspectives to them. I have had the opportunity to intern at the White House under the Obama administration. I've studied abroad in China. In Taiwan. I am presently the youth director of the community. I am the youth choir director, the youth mime director, and I advocate for the Snowden Community Civic Association. On top of that, yes, over 10 years healthcare experience and a master's in health administration from George Washington University. I was accepted into the Harvest Business Analytics program that I kind of pushed to the side because I wanted to come to IE, it's on hold. But the whole point is, those are things that at this point, they don't believe that they could achieve. And if Miss Adrian, she doesn't just live, she didn't just grow up in Snowden, she left home, because my husband was military, we left home, we came back, but I went back to Snowden. So if Miss Adrian is able to do all of these things, she's still true to who she is, and she came back to the community, why can't they? Nurture your gift. One of the things that we like to make sure that we do, once we've already given them exposure, letting them see different things that are available to them, whether it be career, whether it be that they like to draw, and we nurture that gift by providing them or linking with them with an artist for them to master their skills. We have to make sure that we nurture the gift. Sometimes we have a tendency as adults to not listen to the children. And listening is more than just hearing what they say, it's hearing what they don't say. Being able to decipher what it is that they need without them actually coming and saying, I like to play the drums, can you get me drum lessons? And we're paying attention if the teacher says, they tap on the, the, the desk all the time. Does that really mean that there's ADHD? Honestly speaking, it's a touchy subject. 
But it does it really mean that they cannot pay attention? Could it mean that they have different things going on in their mind that we probably need to find a different avenue at a different time to help them navigate to be able to understand the difference between school time and creative time? So these are just a few of the things, skill sets, that we seek to provide for any of the youth. And there's not a specific strategy or format. Because the whole purpose is, if it's holistic, then it is, it's exclusive to that youth, that individual. When we create a whole bunch of programs that just gives you how you're supposed to learn, is it really conducive to learning? Are they really the most efficient? Can they really perform? That's one of the questions that we like to assess. We like to know. If I am a visual learner, I should not give you something that requires you to read. But I need to first be able to identify and evaluate that. So all in all, the whole purpose of the pineapple carriage is to make sure that we create holistic opportunities for growth, creating programs, creating events, creating an avenue for youth in certain areas with specific disparities associated to the inability to learn. Not a comprehension issue, issue or a literacy issue. Finding out how we can help navigate the ability to learn that would address the disparity that it provides a vehicle for them to actually be successful without having to feel that they have to hide or conform to someone else's approach according to who they are. Real quick, why IE for me? In this room, we are rich with diversity. This particular program, built off of having diverse professionals, as I stated before. How can I explain to a student or a child that it is very important for you to be able to be comfortable with yourself if I don't show the example on how to be able to be comfortable with myself and be among so many different individuals that bring such value, not just to my life professionally, but personally, and helping me to go back and, in so many words, witness to them all of the things that you can do, even when someone who is probably narrow-minded, trying to make you believe that you can't do something because you speak a certain way, or you look a certain way, or you dance a certain way. <laughs> the whole point is making sure that they are comfortable with who they are after they're able to identify that they actually have a culture. And then making sure that what it is that we see that they like, or even if they say that they like, we help to nurture that gift. Doesn't necessarily mean that's the path that they'll continue to go on, but when it comes to education and it's time for them to make those decisions, they'll have a more strong thought process on what they believe that they do want to step into. When it's time for them to sign up for those four, one of the four decisions for going to high school, then they'll be able to do it and do it confidently and not spend two years in some type of curriculum that was nothing that they have, it was just something that someone picked for them because they looked like that they could do a certain thing. And then, once we do that, we understand how they learn. We nurture that, help them provide the skill set, not just the training, but give them the practice to be able to advance in that skill set and in that area. And then, when it's time for them to fill out the applications at 16 years old, to walk into those opportunities that these major companies have created for them, they wouldn't be 160 applicants, but only 30 qualify to be referred to the next group or referred to the company leader because no one really knows how to fill out the application. Thank you.